Hello a uh, Croso. I'm Tara Crank from Dryad Bushcraft. I'm here today with Koi Tleil, part of the Smallwoods Association, to bring you a video on autumn fluffy stuff. By fluffy stuff, I mean these downy seed heads that you get on thistle, willow herb, and also reed mace, greater reed mace. There's a few things you can do with them, and today we're gonna to do two things. The first is we're gonna do a bit of fire lighting, and the second, we're going to collect some materials for nesting birds. This will do. <laughs> Let's go. Thistles can be found wayside and in wildflower meadows, just like this one here. This is a clearing in a woodland and there's loads growing. They can be up to about six feet tall at the tallest. Its flowers go from a beautiful purple to these fluffy seed cases to help them disperse with the wind. And if you pick them, be careful of the spines. The dry seed heads will just fall off in your hands. And that's what you want to choose. I've spotted some willow herb in the clearing just behind me. And it looks like it's a bit of a climb, so you're coming with me. Rose Bay Willow Herb grows really well in woodland clearings, in particularly sunny areas. It can be up to six feet tall, like this one here, with flower spikes of bright purpley pink flowers the leaves are lanceolate, meaning that they're long and pointed. They spiral their way around the stem. And the veins come back on themselves at the edges of the leaf. This is a great time to pick the downy seed cases of the Rose Bay Willow Herb. They're fluffy as well as fibrous and therefore light really well. Uh, they catch a spark because of the fluff and they'll burn for a little bit longer because of the fibres to them. A common name for willow herb is fireweed because it spreads so well on ground that's been burned. It has horizontal roots, and that is how it manages to do that. Its seed cases being so light and fluffy mean that they get dispersed on the wind really easily too. So it's got two ways of propagating itself. We made it out. That was a lot of brambles. Let's go and find some greater reed mace. It normally grows near fresh water it's uh, the one that looks like a sausage on a stick. Let's go. Greater reed mace is sometimes referred to as bulrush, but this is misleading as the true bulrush is another completely different species. If you collect the seed heads, store them somewhere dry. You can snap them and use your thumbs to release the seeds, which are what we will find useful. Now we're back, let's have a closer look at how our fluffy stuff works as tinder. I've got a fire steel here and I'm going to have a go at lighting them now. Let's have a look at the thistle first. Whoa! Amazing! That was fast. And next up, the rosary willow herb. interesting. Oh, 
That's going for a really long time. Nice. I wonder if the thistle will do that. Yeah, that definitely burns for less time. That's a nice flash. That's a really good, long, hot heat. Gosh, that's really warm now. And then finally, I've got my reed mace, my reed mace head there. It's uh, got a little bit mixed up with some dry grass, but that's mostly, mostly reed mace there. Let's have a look at that one. It's smouldering for a long time in the places where it's quite dense but in the places where it's really fluffy it's just getting a flash so that's really interesting it's almost like it's a combination of the properties of the thistle and the rosebud willow herb some people use the seed heads of reed mace clustered up as they are in order to hold an ember for a while and it's great for a flash too Looks like we've had some great success with those, with the thistle being a great flash and then the rose bay willow herb smouldering for quite a long time and then the reed mace doing kind of a combination of both of them. Let's move on now and have a look at how they can be used for birds nests. I've cut this tiny bit of hazel so that I can bend it round into a ring and stuff the fluff into a ring. Um, birds love this sort of material for their nests, this soft stuff. So I've, I've added in a little bit of, of dry grass. I've got reed mace in there. I've also got the willow herb and the thistle. So you can use hazel twigs for this, but you can also use willow, you can use bramble if you just get some tough gloves and strip off all the, all the spines. All you need to do is twist it, you'll hear a little bit of a click. Just keep twisting it and then it'll start to flex a little more so that when you, when you twist and wrap around it can go round as opposed to breaking so all you need to do is twist it and pivot it a little bit so you can bend it round into a bit of a circle and then you're just going to tuck in one end and then keep wrapping and tucking around the other end. Just like that. There you have your ring. And then you can start tucking them in. It's just a loose way of holding it and hanging it up so that you could take it home put it in your garden if you have one or hang it outside on a wall and then it's easy enough for birds to pinch out the materials from that and there you have it our bird nesting ring let's go and hang it up I think the birds are going to love it.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like and subscribe to the Koi Tleil channel where you can find more videos like this. Enjoy your fluffy stuff this autumn. My name's Tara Crank. Hoi